All right, my cars are here. I am a, a client that needs <laughs> everything done, and I want it done today. Oh, yeah, uh, uh, spray detailer. We can do it. <laughs> you got it. We got, we got Jim here. I mean, he, 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 runs, a, he runs a place, so I mean, he, he that kind of guy. Hey, I'm taking the class this weekend to learn how to do this stuff. Who's teaching? Uh, Jim. Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, thank you all for tuning in note? for the 46th episode of Live Detailing Classes. And like always, I'm going to do my little spiel because that's what I get paid to do. If you haven't liked, shared, or subscribed, be sure to do so. Tell your friends. And also, don't forget, we have our $10,000 giveaway give going on right now. As soon as we hit 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, guess what? One of you lucky subscribers are going to win. Uh, for more information, I'll put a, a slide up here towards the end of the presentation today, so that way you guys can get a little bit more info on that. But also, one more thing, AG Swag is open. As you can tell, right below our YouTube, you can see the little swag buttons down there. And if you're on Facebook, look in the comments, and there it is right there. So, with that being said, what are we doing? Well, one of the things are, is when you see on camera all these cars here, this is for my big three-day class this weekend. We'll have a total of 14 cars here. The class will get them all detailed in three days, 12 the first two days, because we do yep. six each day. Then there's two for wet sanding on Sunday. But that's why it, all the cars are here. Yeah, you well, don't sit around in Mike's class. There's no chairs. No. There's no chairs. There's no tables. There's no chairs at all. Uh, this, I think this is interesting. This is, we're going to talk about car washing I'm going to go this way. I'm going to go this way and, and I'll get uh, close. This is out of my antique collection of cars stuff and what's cool about this is it's 69 cents <laughs> for all you big spenders out there and how do and, you open that uh <laughs> that's a i don't know a can opener <laughs> oh wow you, you're confused on I your never own thought product about that. but here's what i always look for there's no website address so i know it's like pre-1994 or whatever that's the internet cool. was born have to ask Al Gore. <laughs> <laughs> anyway we're gonna talk about car washing me and yancey we were out here looking at all these cars and on camera, you know, this Mustang probably looks good, that Mustang looks good, but when you throw a swirl finder light on them, they're full of swirls and scratches. And we were talking and we, we decided that, you know, the most common time that people put swirls and scratches in their car's finish is when they're either washing it or drying it. And if you think about it, that's the thing most people do the most. I mean, and they do pay, themselves. They don't pay people. Yeah. Most times, they're, I got a hose, I got a bucket, I can yeah. do that. I mean, nobody really does tune-ups anymore, and and uh, you know, you don't really do paint correction and ceramic coatings every other weekend. But a lot of people do wash their car often. And what I always tell people is how how long your finish will look good always comes down to how you touch it. Okay, and then what you touch it with. And if you touch it with something that's got embedded particles in it, you're gonna scratch the heck out of it. Another thing I always tell people is it takes hours to buff out a car, it takes seconds to put scratches in. And up here, there's a whole row of different buckets. In fact, we've added a new bucket to our bucket collection, but one of them is the clean, dirty towels. Can you zero in on that one? All right, let me go down, all right, okay. I'm in there. And the whole purpose for that one is, is all you guys, if you're detailing cars, you need to have some sort of container, it doesn't have to be a bucket, uh, which one is it? This one? Yep. And so when you're done wiping a car or washing a car, whatever you're doing, you have to have a clean bucket. It, it has to be clean. And then the only dirt on there is the dirt you just took off the car, and it goes in there to keep it clean until you can get it to the wash machine. So it's always about keeping your towels from becoming contaminated or your, your wash mitts, keeping things from becoming contaminated because... Once they become contaminated, it can be very hard to find out that they're contaminated except for the hard way, and that's when they scratch something. I mean, you, I mean, imagine trying to look through here, Jim, and try to find a contaminant, you know? It'd be very difficult. So, um, so there's reasons to have tools like that to help you keep everything that's going to touch the paint clean. And when in doubt, do not use it, you know? So, Good words to live by on that one. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so we're going to talk about different wash media. So we've got a, a number of different types of wash mitts here. Uh, different ways to dry cars and uh, car wash soaps and then the different types of car washes. So there's um, there's the two bucket method. Don't we got the two bucket thing down here? Yep. So right here, the mm -hmm. two bucket method. Um, I'm a big fan of the single bucket method and I like my uh, grit guard universal detailing cart and I keep my bucket up here because then I don't got to bend over. Plus it holds all my detail, my car wash tools. And then there's um, waterless washes, rinseless washes, spray detailers can be used to clean a car if it's light dust, fingerprints, or smudges. And then uh, there's different types of washing as far as, it go, as far as it's related to a prep wash 
or a maintenance wash. And so, that would be for like what you're doing in your detailing process, correct? Yeah, so, so all these cars in here are gonna get a prep wash because we're gonna buff them all out and probably ceramic coat them all. So they're gonna get a prep wash. Now, when these cars leave here, it'll be up to the owners to do a maintenance wash. Mm -hmm. You want to, you want, while we're doing that, why don't you just, while we're here, yeah. tell the difference between those two washes? Sure. Uh, a prep wash is where you want to get the car as clean as you can before you're going to do things like clay it, uh, compound it, polish it, and coat it, wax it, or put a synthetic sealant on it. You're, you, the goal is to get it clean. And um, one of the things you want to always do is like, um, I don't know if you can zoom in over here, but when you're washing a car, you know, you've got all these gaps, no matter what the car is, you've got gaps. You need to flush all the dirt that you've loosened off the car because when you're running a buffer, the buffer creates an air current that could pull a brace of particle that you loosened but didn't flush off the car into the buffing process and then that could scratch the paint. So. The prep wash is really about getting the car, what I like to call surgically clean, so you can avoid any of the risks that could cause scratches when you're doing any of the other things you're gonna do to the car, even like clean. And then a maintenance wash is after the car is beautiful, it's all done, now you need to carefully wash it so you don't induce swirls and scratches back into the finish. And now the difference between those is the soaps that you use, one has like a protectant left behind it, and the other one is stripping it where there's nothing left behind it, correct? And well, there's lots of options. There, there are, you know, we at AutoGeek, we sell a number mm -hmm. of car washes that don't have anything in them. They're like a coating wash, you know, because you don't want to put anything on the coating because that defeats the purpose of the coating. Um, but there are a lot of car washes on the market that have a built-in Carnuba mm -hmm. or uh, SiO2 is a big one now. And um, I, I believe we'll probably see graphene car washes come out. I mean, <laughs> Uh, what's that other one? Unobtainium. That's ours. The it isn't out yet. car wash. It puts unobtainium every time you wash your car. And um, but for the prep wash, really, you don't want you don't want something that doesn't put anything on the paint because that's redundant. You're gonna if you're gonna compound a car, it really doesn't make any sense to use a car wash with Carnuba or a waterless wash with Carnuba or SiO2 because you're gonna be taking all that stuff off in the compounding or polishing step. Makes sense? Right. And it's not a waterless yeah. wash. It's not waterless because that have oils and different things in there. What you want to do is see all the imperfections in the paint. Oh yeah, oh, that's good a good point. You want, you want those Strip to pop, it. and you want to see that the, that those, those scratches show up, so you know how to get those yeah. Uh, yeah. scratches off. So don't and hide hide the things that you're trying. Did to Did we introduce try. Jim? No. Okay. <laughs> Way to be. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Uh, my mind's going 100 miles an hour because my class is coming up starting tomorrow morning at 7:30, and I just. But Jim Lefebvre. Uh, the man, the myth, the legend behind Dr. Beasley's. And the timing of him being here for this class is also uh, related to this brand new product that you uh, sent out an email and teased everybody about. Right. And it has to do with me. Yes. <laughs> well, I've been to a few of your cla classes and you, you, you really, uh, I went in, in the Midwest in Chicago, I own a car wash, I love washing cars, and we get them wet. And you, when I come to your class, you said, we had vintage cars. It would be... Um, it wouldn't be good to put water in all the channels and everything else that's in the car. It, yeah. it would be compromising them and may rust in those areas that you can't right. see. Yeah. It's getting water in those areas. Yeah. So you always mentioned a prep wash type product and you've been using glass cleaner. And this, I know yeah. glass cleaner <laughs> can be a little harsh. I want the clarity, I want to clean the paint, but I didn't want some, something as har harsh as glass cleaner. So I invented that for you, for your class. Thank you, Jim. So this is the new Mike Phillips prep wash. Oh, here, hold on, let me, so I can get <laughs> your the head Dr. in the shot. In Dr. Beasley's line. <laughs> so I can get your head in the shot. Let me go to the wide angle. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it is true. A lot of times, anybody out there that's read any of my write-ups, um, a lot of times I am working on what I call SIV, special interest vehicles. And both this 67 GT350, this 1970 Boss, and this 57 Corvette, these cars have all been restored. So as a professional courtesy to the owners, I never wash them with running water and flush water into all the places that could cause rust because my guess is that these these cars have already been restored, so that means somebody's already taken the time, expense, labor, and mm -hmm. energy to take them apart, cut out the rusted parts, put in new metal, you know, rust proof it, paint it, put them back together again, and I'm not going to be the guy that causes rust. In fact, when if you ever restore a car, one of the most time consuming and expensive 
aspects of restoring a car is removing the rust and putting in new sheet metal. You know, even the, even the Corvette over here being fiberglass, it still has a lot of steel bracketry and frame, and these things rust. So that's why I don't wash classic cars as a general practice, because I'm not going to be the guy that causes rust in things that have already had the rust removed. Modern cars, of course, wash them mm -hmm. all the time with running water. So the, the safest way, in my opinion, is with lots of water flushing the surface and getting the dirt off the car. Well, I heard you and uh, Jim talking about his way that he does his washes at his shop. Can you kind of yeah, highlight sh that? Yeah, I've been to, I've taught a roadshow class at Jim's facilities in Chicago, and the first thing I noticed when I went in was was how many times they rinse the car before a mitt even touches the paint. So why don't you walk through mm -hmm. your process? Sure. I mean, it is a production process. We have hoses coming from the ceiling, but first thing when we get a car in there, we rinse it off. And the reason why we do that is to get all the big stuff off. Let's get this thing wet. And that's what water does, help unlink the dirt from the surface. And so we get everything wet, we get that, um, get the big particles off and everything. Then first thing we have a foam gun, we foam up the car. And then we let it dwell. We let, we let the chemistry work, mm -hmm. softening dirt. And, and letting Ro that run off. It rains a lot in Chicago. Oh yeah, we yeah. got a lot of filth, road filth. <laughs> and then our guys with a little power washer, we do the tires, we clean the wheels. That gives us a few minutes to let everything dwell. And then rather than put in a mitt on that right away, because we know there's a lot of dirt I, I, in that foam being lifted from the foam, we rinse that off again. We foam it up again, and then we go with freshly clean mitts. Um, something like this one Yeah, here, something right? like this. Yeah. They're freshly cleaned. Uh, mitts. We don't reuse mitts for different cars, and then we do is we uh, we wash it up, then rinse that that again. So there's we foam it up twice, we rinse it off three three times, and you know with a sea of black cars that we get get there, we don't want to cause any harm, and we found that to be the, the safest way for us. Yeah. So when I was teaching that class there, here's the thing I noticed was he has uh, a, a, a three different like channels or lanes. And from the time he opens to the time he closes, you have such a good mm -hmm. reputation that everybody that has a nice car, he's educated them that the reason he charges more <laughs> is because of this better process versus all the hack car washes in the area where they don't do any of these things. And that's right. why your car gets all scratched up. But it's just a constant stream of cars, high-end cars going through. And the other thing I noticed about your facilities, you have these huge commercial washing machines and dryers. So you've got these 55 gallon, I think they're 55 gallon, like Rubbermaid, yeah, yeah. roll around garbage, or... Yeah, they were garbage cans. Bar garbage cans, would, but they're In clean. a previous life, they and, were garbage. And, and as the guys <laughs> use a mitt, they go in there, then they go from there to the washing machine, the washing machine, the dryer, and then they go back into a clean um, a bin or a, right. a garbage can for the guys to draw from. So it's a process they have in place. So no mitt is ever used twice on a car before yeah. it's washed and dried and, and cleaned again. Yeah. So at least so there's two guys washing the car. So two guys bring get two mitts each. And if it gets filthy or something, just grab another one. We have so many of them. We just yeah. grab a new mitt. It's not a big deal. <laughs> well, that would be a good tip for to tell people. You know, don't just have one wash mitt. I mean, you, you can use. We're going to get to that tip. Okay. Right. Yeah. All right. So uh, anyway, so. But yeah, so it was kind of nice that Jim came down for my big three-day class because he does have this great experience and a functioning car wash right there in the heart of Chicago, mm -hmm. plus a detail shop and a lot of the chemistry laboratory, all, <laughs> kinds of, all kinds of stuff going on there. I think but, he just wants the weather. <laughs> but, but normally when I'm out here detailing cars or even teaching a class, because because of the special interest cars, one of the things I kind of gravitated to over the last couple of years is I started using the Sonax glass cleaner as my prep wash. And the reason why is because if you look at most of the waterless washes, including most of the waterless washes we carry here at AutoGeek, they clean and then they do something. Clean, make it shiny, clean, protect, mm -hmm. clean, add SiO2, clean, add Carnuba. And I didn't want any of those things. I just mm -hmm. want to get the car clean so I can get to the next step. And, and um, my friend Rob McCrary, who uh, works for Sonax USA, when I first started working with Sonax, one of the things he said that Sonax recommends with their glass cleaners to use it with their, um, uh, their, uh, clay, their clay disc pad. Okay, So they have this, it's kind of like a nano skin product. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they recommend putting this down as a lube. And I thought, well, that's interesting, using a glass cleaner as your lube when you're doing the, decontam the mechanical decontamination process. 
And yeah, Demetrius uh, was showing us that over in Germany when we were over in exactly, Germany. Exactly, yeah. So I thought that was interesting. And then, but I started using it. And I go, well, this actually works pretty good. And then I started using it with normal clay because I've kind of gotten away from the rubberized tools. Mm -hmm. And I mostly just use ultrafine clay. And I can share why if somebody wants to know. There's really a good reason why. Um, but then I started thinking about it, and if I wipe the car down and get it clean with the glass cleaner, and it doesn't, mm -hmm. now think about a glass cleaner. Isn't it supposed to clean the glass and leave it streak free? Mm -hmm. Streak free, no residue, residue free. Well, that's what I want with the paint. I just want mm -hmm. the car clean. I don't want to leave anything behind. So I started using that to clean it. Then I started using it to clay it, and I thought, well, not only did I clean it once when I wiped it, now that I'm wiping it again in a way with the clay, I'm cleaning it a second time. So now I'm really getting the car clean before I go to the compounding and polishing process. And uh, even today, I grabbed a 10 liter jug. In fact, uh, could you grab that jug over there? My, my other good friend, Mike here, and just, uh, you can walk and my camera. And we have another on it. <laughs> <laughs> this, this was actually full today. And um, I filled about 24 of these up for my class this weekend. So as we cycle through the cars that need to get them clean, because I didn't know uh, Jim was bringing this, I went ahead and topped all these off with Sonax glass cleaner. So we'll use a combination of both today, or I mean this weekend. Anyway, so that's, uh, that's kind of touching on the topic of a prep wash, getting the car clean, getting ready for the detailing session with something that'll clean the car without adding anything to it. So what are the magic secret voodoo ingredients in this product that you can share? Just, you don't have to go deep. <laughs> Essence why, why? of Mike's sweat. I, I noticed, when I shake it, it makes suds. That's the first thing I noticed. <laughs> well, you need to clean a little bit, okay. so it's gonna lift the, the, the dirt. And I mirrored it like a glass cleaner, because I wanted, it, and when I tested it, I want clarity, uh -huh. I want it to pop, I want to be able to see all the in, imperfections. So there's, basically I left a lot of things out. I left out oils, silicone, car, emulsified car, carnauba. So those are all out. I didn't want the harsh, um, surfactants that you see in glass cleaners. A lot of times you got to take off bugs off the windshield. Mm -hmm. And so it can be a little bit caustic. I just didn't like that in the paint. So I softened up the surfactant um, and I want to bring clar clarity. Now, a lot of uh, uh, glass cleaners have um, a form of alcohol in them to make them mm -hmm. evaporate and to cut yeah. oil, like to right. cut smoker's film or a lot of times a new car will have vinyl fog. Right. All the different plastic components inside your car, you, your, your car's brand new, they're outgassing and some of that outgassing is a film of oil and we see it on the window. What's funny is it's on everything. It's on your headliner, it's on the stream, mm -hmm. it's on everything, but we only see it on the glass, but it's this oily fog. And so a glass cleaner contains some some sort of solvent, and I'm not a chemist, yeah. but I know that some contain. There's one standing right next alcohol. to you. <laughs> alcohol safe. Alcohol is yeah. a safe thing, and I do have some al alcohol in here to help it um, flash. Don't cut drink this at home. Yeah, yeah. cut and flash. Yeah. So okay. Well, hey, I'm excited to try it. I like the color too. You know, orange is my favorite color, so I'm oh. already a fan <laughs> of it. So. <laughs> anyway. Thump, thump, thump. Okay. So uh, car washing then. I guess if we just were to start, I, um, I, I want to start here, the two bucket method. Okay. Okay, me... so a lot of people talk about using the two bucket method. Now, the two bucket method is good for a maintenance wash in my opinion. Um, I, I never use the two bucket method for a prep wash because it's, it's that when I'm doing a prep wash, I'm not trying to like be super, super, super careful and not put scratches in the car. I don't, I don't want to put scratches in the car. But I'm not going to go to the extent of using a two bucket method because I'm likely going to buff the car out. So any minor marring I put in from only using one bucket I can live with because I'm not going to do a two bucket method for a prep wash. To me, the two bucket method is for a maintenance wash. So once the car is beautiful, then you start doing the two bucket method. And the way the two bucket method works is um, down inside both buckets, I have this neat little invention called the grit guard. Right, here, let me zoom in. Okay. Yeah. This is uh, my friend over there, Doug Lamb at the grit guard company came up with this. Uh, the story behind this is he actually had a Ferrari and he noticed like he would detail the Ferrari and after a couple of washes, he'd start to see marring and he'd always see little particles on the bottom of his mm. bucket. So he had this idea to build the grit guard to keep from scratching his Ferrari. And that's where this thing came from. Then he invented this thing called the uh, washboard. What do they call this yeah, thing? Yeah, it's the washboard. Washboard. And so the idea is without the, without the grit guard, without the washboard, the way this worked is you're supposed to actually put your mitt in the bucket, shove it in there and rub this thing against it to agitate and get the particles to fall off the mitt and get trapped below the grit guard. And then he one-upped it by adding, no, I'll probably never get this thing back on there again. 
adding the washboard, then this is the idea is now you kind of rub this against the washboard again, it releases the particles of dirt after you've washed the panel of the car so they get trapped below the grit guard. So with the two bucket wash method, of course you'd want to put a grit guard in both buckets and you start out with the soapy solution. So you gather up some soapy solution, you wash a panel, and before you take all the dirt that you removed off the car and put it back in the soapy solution, you put it in the fresh water bucket, agitate it, get rid of the dirt, and then you kind of got to wring it out, otherwise it's a, a mitt full of clean water. Then you grab some soapy water and go wash another panel. And that's how the two bucket method works. And there are people out there I know that don't believe in the grit guard, but here's, here's what I have to say to just people in general. Uh-oh. The Here grit guard, you know, if, if you put the, I like to put things in, extreme, in extremes. I like to position um, ideas in extremes to help people wrap their brains around it. And here's how I would do that with the grit guard. If having a grit guard in the bottom of your bucket traps the dirt below there, it ain't going to cause any harm and it might help. Not having it is just an extra layer of protection you don't have. So in, in, for me, I'd rather have it and than not have it. And when I teach wet sanding classes and I put my sanding papers into a bucket, I put two of them in there because a lot of times, you know, when you're sanding with the sanding discs or like Aberlon, uh, Aberlon sanding discs, or I use the Nikon brand Japanese electronics grade uh, finishing papers, but you can have particles fall off of them and that's fine, it's gonna happen, but I want them to sink to the bottom. So I mm -hmm. use them in my sand, uh, wet sanding buckets also. Uh, but anyway, so that's kind of the two bucket method. To me, it's something for the maintenance wash. You want a grit guard or two in each of them, and then um, just use good technique. And I will demonstrate good technique. A lot of people uh, don't understand how to do a maintenance wash. You can see I'm gonna come over here to the old right. black pony. Um, of, of course, you know, one of the things we always teach when washing the car is do wheels and tires first, and then go to the top and work your way down. And when you're gonna start doing the body panels, um, if you ever watch people, and this is actually my first how-to book, I say I'm a people watcher. When I watch people wash their cars, they, they actually, they, there's no rhyme or reason or methodology to what they do. They just seem to be pushing that mitt all over the place and then they wonder where the scratches come from. If, you, if, if we detail this car, and we are, and we're gonna put a coating on it, when this car leaves here, when it gets dirty, that dirt is not gonna wanna stick, okay? So a person is not gonna need to scrub to get the dirt off. All they gotta do is make one or two passes. And the way you do that is you start in the center and you move that mitt down, come over, come over, come over, come over, and then finish out on the side and then rinse. You really only need to make one or two passes to loosen the dirt so it'll flush off because it just got detailed. And that's how you do a maintenance wash. You don't sit here and do this. The deep okay? scrub swirl matic wash. I'm washing my car this Saturday. <laughs> I just had it detailed. Hey, where'd all the scratches come from? Well, <laughs> think about it. If there was dirt here, okay, you took your pony out and you cruise it for a couple weeks before you washed it, and there was dirt there, if you took your clean mitt with your really nice car wash soap and you loosened it and then you keep rubbing that mitt, you're grinding mm. all that dirt you loosened into the paint. So quit doing that stuff. Make one or two passes, rinse, and move on. Quit doing so that is the two bucket method. Now, the method I like to do maintenance wash is a twist on the, um, there's an old method that everybody attributes to a guy and his initial start with G and D, but he's actually not the guy that invented, another guy did. But the method is, is you take, you can be my Vanna White. Sure. Vanna! <laughs> there are 12 towels here. These are edgeless, flat weave towels. You mix up your wash solution into your bucket and you throw them all in there. Go ahead, Jim, throw them into the water. <laughs> There's no water. It's okay. <laughs> you want them in there? Yeah, yeah, we're make believe. Okay. Right. So now when you go to wash your car, instead of using one mitt, okay, which you know it's going to get contaminated and dirty, uh -huh. you take one towel out, hand me the towel. And I put 12 towels in there because a, a two door car has nine body panels. Think about it. A four door car has 11. Um, but say I was, I'm, uh, so I'm going to wash the roof. This is a bad example because this is a a vinyl roof, so I'll just go to the hood. But I just pulled this out of my soapy water, so I'm gonna stand here to the side, I'm gonna do my single passes, and I am now done with that towel, okay? Any dirt that got on that towel is now in the clean, dirty towel bucket. I'm not gonna put it back over there, contaminate my wash water, and then grind that dirt into other body panels. I'm gonna just keep on grabbing a fresh towel, grab a fresh towel. 
And that's the, that's, to me, that's the safest way to do a maintenance wash is to use multiple, multiple towels, or if you want to, buy multiple, multiple wash mitts. But every time you wash a panel, that, that wash mitt or that towel is done. You put it in your mm -hmm. clean, dirty bucket or your, your laundry hamper, whatever you have, and then from there it goes to the washing machine, the washing machine, the dryer, comes to a clean table. If you've ever read my article, how and why to inspect your microfiber towels, then you inspect it, then you store it for the next use. You keep your stuff from getting dirty, contaminated, and that's how you avoid getting swirls and scratches in the paint in your car. What do you think of that? I love it. It's great. <laughs> so anyway, so that's the Mike Phillips method. Actually, I wrote that article for how to wash the ceramic coated cars because every time I wash, I ceramic coat someone's car, the first question they ask me is, how do I take care of this? And what people have to understand is just because you got a ceramic coating or a graphene coating or a polymer coating or a quartz coating or whatever it is, it is not an invisible force field that's going to keep anything from marring the paint. That comes down to you. Well, wait a minute. That's what coatings are for. <laughs> they're, they're the imperfect thing, you know, the yeah. most perfect thing to keep your I, paint. I had a gentleman call me this week. He bought a brand new Texas Cadillac. I think it's a Chevy brand. And uh, that's a big truck for the people that don't know. <laughs> and um, he asked me about getting it ceramic coated. And the first thing I says, well, Bob, just let me let you know here to start with, it's not an invisible force field. You still have to wash it carefully. He goes, oh, really? And I go, yeah. <laughs> because I imagine he wanted to run it through the swirl car wash, because you know, there's one by his house and it's cheap. <laughs> but that's just not the case. <laughs> so anyway, so two bucket method, single bucket method, multiple towels. And, um, and that's two different options for washing your car to maintain a, a spectacular looking finish. So the first thing I thought with this example you showed me, I'm not switching out my mitts enough. Instead of using four, <laughs> I should use 12. <laughs> well, just one per body panel. Okay. And you know, um, I actually wrote this how-to book. It never got published. It was called How to Wash a Car. And, mm. and I, do, I do not like to get OCD. I really not like that. Mm. People think I am because I'm a detailer, but I'm mm. actually not. I'm actually just lazy. And people can perceive that as being OCD because of the, sometimes the things you'll do. But in that book, I went deep. And here, where's the dirtiest part on a car when, when, after you've driven it for like a month in rainy weather Fender in Chicago? Wells. Fender Wells. Well, not the, but the, the Hey, you asked. The, lower, asked the lower body panels, right. okay? So in my brain, here's what I would do. If I really want to be careful washing a car, after I did wheels and tires first, I would have a dedicated wash mitt to wash the lower body panels, mm -hmm. and then I'm done with that. But now there's no way, if I'm washing the, the top of a fender, I can get any of the dirt on the bottom part of the fender and bring it back up because I've already mm -hmm. removed it. So if you really want to become OCD, then you would do wheels and tires first, then wash the lower parts of the car, then go to the top and work your way down. Mm -hmm. There's your new process there for uh, uh, Scotty Shine Shop, right? Simon's. Uh, Simon's. Simon's Shine Scotty. Shop. That's what it's called. Scotty. Um, okay, so uh, then to kind of recap, so two bucket, single bucket, those are maintenance washes. And for prep washes, um, if I'm in here, I'm using glass cleaner, but now I'm switching over to the, uh, the new uh, prep wash from Dr. Beasley. And if I'm doing a maintenance wash in here, inside the garage, then I'm probably gonna still wanna stick with a, um, a water wash, you know? Mm -hmm. So maintenance wash. And then it's coming down to picking the one that matches whatever's on your car. So I always tell people to look at things like, uh, I use the term a synergistic chemical compatibility. If you have Dr. Beasley's uh, ceramic, uh, name mm -hmm. one of your coatings. The nano resin. Nano resin on your car then look to see if he's got a matching maintenance product and use that to clean your car. And every company out there, usually Mothers, Meguiar's, you know, whoever mm -hmm. it is, if they have something to protect the paint, they probably got something to clean the paint and stick within that, you know, that synergistic chemical compatibility option. You would hope so. What's that? <laughs> Said you would hope so. Yeah, well, you know, it's just, it's, you know, you can go outside. I mean, I mix and match chemicals all the time, but I just think there's something to be said um, if the, the chemist that made, say, the compound makes the polish, he knows how to make the polish because he made the compound. And then that same chemist goes to make the wax, the sealant, or the coating, he's better able to formulate it because he knows what was in the compound and the polish. And you do that right. with, your, with your nano surface primers. Right. Yeah, it's, it's the exact thing he does. His, his nano surface primers go ahead and already are laying down a protective base of ceramic mm -hmm. that your other dedicated coatings can bond to. Yeah. So there's a synergistic chemical compatibility there. Right. Boom. Nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> you can type that into Google and add Mike Phillips to pull my article up on that, by the way. Um, All okay. right. Hey, I got a quick question for you. So since we're 
I should have adjusted the camera first. I always do that. So now, say we're just getting into detailing. We, we have a brand new car, really always taking it through a scroll o matic before in my life, and now that I have a new car, what way would you suggest them to uh, start off with? If it was me, I would do the multiple towel wash method. You, you know, feel that would be the safest way? I, I do. I think that's the safe way. Now, some guys will say, well, Mike, isn't a washman better? Fine. Buy multiple washmen. <laughs> we'll sell you anything here at Auto Geek. I mean, uh, to, to me, here's how my brain thinks. So hand me one of those, would yeah. you, Jim? Okay, so I, I think a dozen of these, these are, uh, this is called the Forest Green Flat Weave Edgeless Microfiber Towel. A dozen of these is 20 bucks. Okay, a dozen mm -hmm. will wash most two door cars. So you can say you got a bigger car, maybe you get a dozen and a half, buy two dozen. It's still pretty cheap, 40 bucks. I don't, I think these are 10 bucks a piece. So if you bought a dozen mm -hmm. of these, you're talking 120 bucks. So however, I, let your budget be your guide, however you want to. But the point is, is this here with soapy water, washing one panel at a time, will get it just as clean as this. Well, mm -hmm. I, I do like this better. It's just I don't like to tell people to go out and spend, you know, 200 bucks on a wash to wash their car. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, so that's your option. Um, by the way, I had a gentleman come down here. This would be about five or six years ago. It was an older guy. He had a black Mercedes Benz. And they, the customer care called me to the front lobby because he wanted me to look at his, his Mercedes Benz. And he says, Mike, I, 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 I read all your articles. I, I read your book. I, I bought the Wolfgang compound polishes and waxes. I bought a Flex 3401 and the Lake, Lake Country pads. I buffed up my car and got it perfect, but now look at it. See the fine swirls. What do you think the first question I asked him was? How do you wash your, how, how do you touch your car? How do you wash your car? How do you wash your car? And he says, well, I take it to a 100% hand car wash. I love it when they put the one, the percentage sign and the one and the zero, zero. You know, 100, <laughs> like, like 50% can't wash. I mean, a guy's missing his arm, right? But the, the signs always say 100% hand cars. And it invokes this idea in your brain that it's careful. But it's not careful if the guys working there drop this and pick it up and keep washing your car. Mm -hmm. Or someone went through with mud on their car and they take their mitt and wash it. Now you come through with your beautiful black Mercedes Benz mm -hmm. and they use the same mitt to wash your car. So even though the idea of 100% hand car wash invokes the idea of carefulness and safety, that isn't so. So when he told me this, well, I take it to a 100% hand car wash, I said, well, here's what you do. Buy your own wash mitts, take them to the guys, tip them well, and say, hey, would you mind using my mitts to wash my car? Then when they're done, gather your mitts up, go home and wash them, dry them, put them back in some place, clean in your car, and every time you go there, have them use your wash mitts. Oh, so you're telling them to be that guy. That guy. <laughs> that guy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so now I know you I know you talk about this a lot, so I'm kind of teeing you up a little bit. The Boy Scouts are on the side of the road. Do you take your cards there, or you what know, do you do? Uh, my I know you want to you want to help them. I organized charity car washes. Now, why do cheerleaders got to go to Hawaii to learn to cheer? Can't they do it in their hometown? But anyway, they got to raise money to buy their uniforms mm -hmm. and stuff like this. So here's what I call those types of things. They're called scratch your car for five bucks. Okay. If you type that into Google and add my name, you'll pull my article up. <laughs> Seriously, I got an article. That's the title. Here's what you do. When you see the football team or the volleyball team or the, the uh, what's, the, uh, what's the, the people that get in the pool and do uh, swimming? Synchronized swimming? Synchronized the swimming swim. team, whatever it is. You know, the badminton team. The, the, wow. The, uh, <laughs> what was your high school like? <laughs> you, you guys know, maybe had badminton and maybe it's the swimming? frisbee team, <laughs> whatever it is, and they're trying to raise money. Pull in, give them five bucks, and leave. <laughs> Don't let them wash your car. They're completely unqualified to touch the paint, you know. And mm -hmm. I have, I have sat back one time. I tried to help these cheerleaders. You know, I was trying to show them how to correctly wash the car wheel tires. And here's what they did. They cranked up their boom box and they're dancing around, washing cars. They would drop a mitt and pick it right up and wash that black BMW with it. They would wash half a wheel and stop. I mean, these people are not trained experts. They're, they're trying to raise money. That's a noble cause. Fine. Pull in, give them five bucks, and pull out. So that way you feel good about yourself. Okay. But your car doesn't get scratched up. Is there any tips or anything that you could think of, Jim, about you know helping people to try to wash their car properly? Um, I think I think you got it. Uh, exchanging out um, either towels or mitts is the way to go. Um, Simple. It's what about? Even, yeah. what, it's not even complicated. All right. What about water? 
Lots you, of it. No, really? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the wow. best time to wash a car is after your car's been sitting in the rain for like a week. Everything's soft. Now go out and wash it. But no, I mean, like say you're on well water, you're on city water, yeah. RODI systems. I mean, would that help you in washing? Well, or, or is that the, just more or less the after effect of what would happen? Here's my take wash. on it, and Jim might have something different. Mm -hmm. At some point, you got to drive the car. So no matter, no matter what the water is, um, if you let it sit there in the car, it, unless it's been you know filtered, chances are it's going to leave some kind of water spot. So get the water off the car. That comes into drying chamois, and I have a couple mm -hmm. of different types up here, or a blower. You know, if you got your car coated, you can hit it with like a leaf blower, or a car dryer, and mm -hmm. just blast everything off. What's your take on the water? Um, You're a chemist, so you know a lot yeah. about water. Well, here's uh, what I know. Water is a universal solvent. And it's wet. Yes, it is. It's wet. <laughs> um, it's no, wet. yet. I don't know what, I, if it's spotting, but if you, if, what is the issue? I, I try to figure out what is the issue, what is the problem? If it's scratching, um, exchange out, you know, you want the foam, you want to lift it off, and you want to get it off. If it's spotting, then you may have to get clean, cleaner water filtered or some, some something, but I'm not, Depends on what the issue is. Okay. Yeah. Um, we, we actually sell the CR spotless water. Do you water. remember making that video in that yeah. black vet? Yeah, we had a black Corvette out here like in July. In July, mm -hmm. it was like 110 degree <laughs> heat index, and we're out there, we're going to show that it doesn't make spots. And oh, I sweated my ass off outside. Yeah, yeah we, we washed it, we rinsed it, we lit the water, we did a time lapse video, not a spot on that car. So to me, those things are good for either lazy people that are too lazy to drive, run a chamois over the car right. and get the water off, or for motor homes. Are you know where those come in handy? Where's that? My house with well water, because I have well water and it's mm. not good well water either. Yeah. Yeah. And if you are going along, it will start leaving little spots everywhere. So that, that helped me when I got there, one at the house. There are times and places, but you know, again, if you're gonna wipe the water off, then whatever's in the water doesn't matter because you're gonna wipe it off. It's only when you're gonna let it stay behind. But for RVs, if you've got a real high-end motor home, motor, motor coach, base coat, clear coat finish, it's really hard, you know, and a lot of people that own them are older, and it's harder mm. for them to drive anything past where they can reach without getting on some sort of scaffolding. But if you could rinse that, with uh, filtered water, then you wouldn't have to d worry about it. But here's what I always wonder, when you run into water spot problems, is what is in the water? Yeah. Right. You know, when, when you, urethane, you know, all three of these cars, this Corvette has a base coat, clear coat finished. So does both these Mustangs. Urethane is actually fairly stout. It's a tough, you know, material. And if you've got something so corrosive in your water that not only does it leave a spot, but it etches the paint, you know, it eats a little ring into it, uh, you have to ask yourself, instead of you know looking for the next best coating, ask yourself, what the hell's in the water? <laughs> and don't drink it. <laughs> don't drink it. And maybe don't even shower in it. So, uh, but that, that is a common problem. Let's talk about different types of wash media. So I got a couple different things up here. This is, um, I think this is the one from... Uh, Dodo juice, isn't it? The Dodo Wookie? juice, yeah. yeah the Wookie. And you can mm -hmm. tell it was an animal because if you turn this thing inside and out, you can see the skin. Right here, hold mm -hmm. on. You see that, that's a, that's got a flesh skin and there's you know type of leather that's animal hide and um no I, animals were harmed during making this video <laughs> no animals. i i love these things but i, I and it's not a problem because i don't like the word problem it's an issue but here's the issue anytime you're using these types of wash mitts what happens over time is the fibers mat together so what you really need to do mm. is go to a pet supply store and buy like a, a dog or a cat brush and after it dries, brush it out. I thought you were joking about that no, earlier no. in your message. It's in my how-to book. Oh. Get a pet brush and, and brush it out to keep all the fibers separated. Otherwise, they mat together. And see, once they start to mat together, and now you wash the car, they're going to start mm. scratching. Yeah. Okay, this is, uh, this is some sort of uh, microfiber pad from Griot's Garage. I also have their, their wa traditional kind of mitt here, too. And um, what I like about these, if you look closely, right, they have a on. short nap. Hold on, let me zoom in. And it's, it's, an, it's, it's an open fiber, it's not a loop, okay? And, and same thing here, this is, a, uh, this is the Gion uh, microfiber wash mitt, and it's a, it's a single strand fiber, not mm. a looped fiber. So you know what the difference is when you're washing the car between looped and single strand? One holds on, the other one doesn't? Go ahead, take your guesses. I just did. One holds on and the other one doesn't, and things get snagged in it better. Yeah, exactly. yeah, there's a loop. Yeah. Yeah. If there's a I loop, win. you could have a stick or a bug leg get mm. into the loop, and it, it'll be harder to flush it off. Or right. if the fingers are all open like this, they can more easily flush off. Mm. So 
um, anyway, so that's, that's just one of the differences. But here's the deal, is if you are practicing all the things that we talked about in here, keeping this thing clean, then it, sh it should be very safe. I actually really like this mitt. Um, this is their this is their lambs wool mitt. Was that lambs wool? Mm -hmm. Is that synthetic? Okay. Nope. See, there's some animal yeah. skin in there. There's animal um, skin. One yeah. thing with animal skin, Chip, and I started out with lambs wool mitts. Mm -hmm. You gotta let these things dry out. Yeah. <laughs> those 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 garbage cans that they, that they pile up there. Yeah. Woo, they stink. Oh yeah. Yeah. You gotta let these things dry out and and uh, well, get some air. If you could find a chemist to make something to add to the wash water to sanitize. Gee, I wonder where we could find well, you one. You can sanitize, but you still nothing like dry, you know, yeah. moisture is, yeah. is just gonna cause problems. And we had chunks of like the fur come out too. <laughs> so I went with a synthetic. It works really well for us. Okay, so now here, this is, I, I love I these. I love those too, yeah. those are great. So these are called microfiber chenille. And what's funny about this is you can find this stuff at gas stations, you know, mm. it's dusters for cleaning your oh, fan yeah. blades. Mm. I mean, it's, it's virtually just in everything. McGuire's just launched something like this, you know. Well, Billy Gibbons wears one as a hat. Does he? Yeah, ZZ yeah. Top, he has a great okay. one. So I always call it the alien caterpillar, though, because they look like them fuzzy caterpillars, and I don't know. But here's what I like about it. All these little fingers, when you put it into your bucket and swish it around, they all open up and uh, particles can release off of them. Mm -hmm. So that's why I like them. And then they hold up really well. Like I have like, I don't know, 20 of these that I use for my classes. And after we're done with them, we wash them in the washing machine, throw them in the dryer, and, and they just seem to hold up really well. Mm -hmm. When we first brought these into AutoGeek years and years and years that's ago, whatever it was, it was really cheap and the insides fell apart. So I know you can think that they're all the same, but the ones we sell here are actually really high quality and they just don't fall apart. So, you know, get, get your washing machine wherever you want to, but we don't sell the cheap ones here. I got a question. Mm -hmm. What is this for? Do you ever really put your I hand in there? Never. Hand never. Hand in there. Like, why do no. they put this? Just... <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the problem with putting your hand in this damn thing <laughs> is then you'd be taking it out, put it back in, take it back yeah. out, because yeah. you know you're rinsing. So it's just you just grab the you thing. Just and grab wash. it. And yeah. Wash it. We actually sell some here that are just sewn shut. They're, okay. Yeah. So we've got two different types. Um, don't matter to me which type though. I just whatever's handy. Uh, oh, over here, we have uh, some different types of microfiber towels now. I was actually on the forum today and a, a gentleman sent me an email and asked me what towel I recommended for a waterless wash. So that's gonna be where you spray something on, you take your towel, spread it around, flip to the dry store or grab a second towel and dry that section and now the car's clean. And you know, the thing is, is when he asked me the question, he didn't say was it for maintenance wash or for prep wash. So I use these out here. Um, these are some real popular towels we sell here at Megu or Meguiar's Autogeek. One has a fluffy side, a big fluffy weave. The other side of it has a flat weave. And um, I use these for prep washes for waterless wash here. And I typically use the, uh, the fluffy side because here's my theory is if you have a dirt film on here and you put the flat weave against that and push it, you're gonna, there's no place for the mm -hmm. dirt to bury into. Mm -hmm. It's trapped between this flat weave and the paint and you're gonna probably scratch the paint. But as soon as you add this, this pile here, which is like, you know, here, two me, or three millimeters. Let me get in there. Now, now the dirt is a place to bury into. And to me, that makes it a little bit safer. But it also means you can really only use one side of the towel, you know, to uh, wash the, the a panel with, because their side's got the flat sheen. Um, but what I, here's a little tip, though, and, and Yancey, I've shared this with you. Whenever I'm doing that, so I say I, wash, I spray down an ample amount of a water to swash, I put the towel down. The next thing I do is I put a little mist of whatever it is I'm using on the side, because it's easier to, to grab and hold on to a damp side of a fiber mm -hmm. than a dry one, your hand will just fly right off. Mm -hmm. So I always dampen one side of my towel before I start wiping. Uh, but th those are two options, I, uh, the Cobra, the purple, and the, the gray one. And um, this, is a t this is actually a, a, a... That's Griot's, isn't it? Yeah, this is the Griot's Garage Pure Freaking Magic, okay? Now, this does have a loop, see that? It's got a, it's got a closed loop. And um, I love the towel except for the closed loop. But again, if you're putting into practice good techniques, so after you wash a panel, it goes in your container that's clean to keep it clean mm -hmm. until it can get to the wash machine, then it shouldn't be a problem. But it's, it's a very high, feel that, it's very yeah. heavy weight, it's oh, very yeah, stout, it's nice. it's nice. And it has the same type of nap on both sides. Um, I don't know what this costs off hand, but um, I think this would be a good option for a, um, a maintenance wash a prep wash, water swash, a rinseless wash, 
and do the multiple towel in a bucket method, okay, with this towel. And this is a towel I've been using lately, and I have to be honest, I haven't actually tried to wash a car with it, but this is a, a for the windows. This is what they call this, is yep, the rad that company. Boy, it's only like the fifth video <laughs> we did with it, and yeah, finally got it nailed, right? The FTW, not for the wind, but for, for the, the windows. windows. And um, I have, I think I got 80 of these out here for my class this weekend <laughs> to wipe compounds and polishes off. I, I, I love them because if you compare this one to the green one, compare them. This green one? Mm-hmm. Okay. See how this one's stouter? Yeah. It yeah. just has more girth to it. Yeah. And I'm telling you, when you go to wipe a compound or a polish off paint, you know, I love the soft, flimsy towels, but they tend to just roll over instead of wiping stuff off. You take this thing down on paint, it's going to pull the compound polish or wax off. I even use them yeah. for a... a panel wipes and for the final buff when I do coatings. Hmm. So the only thing you haven't did with it is wash it. I only wash haven't done is wash a car with it, yeah. But this exactly. is the loop, loop terry, right? It does it's have the loop terry, but <laughs> I put into practice those protocols we've right. talked about. So anyway, so there's some different types of wash media. And um, speaking of wash media, what's the new bucket we got down there? Oh, that one here. I Duh. wish I knew a chemist because I have a question <laughs> for him. Dun, dun, dun. Uh -oh. The new bucket is the pre soak. Oh, you really put that on there? I did. Crystal crystallization prevention. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, when, you're using, um, when you're using a towel to wipe oh. off excess coating, right. what happens to the towel? Many times it, it gets hardened. It hardens. It gets stiff. It gets crunchy. You yeah. see where and he's going with this? Now you can't wipe paint with it ever right. again. You could check the oil on your engine, yeah. <laughs> right? Okay, it's good for that. I take my, my scrappy towels. I keep some back there. Anything back there. In fact, that one back there might be crunchy. Um, these old cars that you see here, like this 1951 Fugly, um, <laughs> they, uh, they drip oil. They leak oil. And so I'm not going to use a good paint care towel to wipe up the oil. So anytime I come across a scrappy towel, I do this. I put the mm -hmm. letter B on it, okay? That means bad. <laughs> Don't use on paint. And a lot of times you can, you can feel it's, it's scratchy. Yeah. Okay, so I came up with this idea. I always tell people when you're doing coating work, as soon as you're done with the towel, to mix up a bucket full of hot water with either an APC or a microfiber detergent and dunk that towel in mm -hmm. there. And when you're done with the car, right away get that to the wash machine. And that's the most you can do to try to preserve that towel. Right. And then I was thinking, what if a chemist could make a chemical that you add to the water that would dissolve that dissolve coating it. or keep it from crystallizing or right. something so you wouldn't have to throw away your towels? It might, have, yes, those, it might have to be caustic because some of those coatings are chemical resistant, as we know, some of them have acrylics in it, and you could have soap and water, it's still going to be resistant to, to that. But that's yeah. smart to put it in there right away, because some coatings can dissolve in there if you get that right right away. But yeah. I wouldn't say them all. Yeah, no, I wouldn't say them all mm -hmm. either. But but I was just trying to think, what, what can I do? Because I, I could do nothing. <laughs> I could just right. throw them in a, over here, um, I have a row of uh, boxes. Oh, yeah, I can't see over there. Uh, Sorry. Uh, I'll go get one. I'll count how many I have here. People don't understand when you take a Mike Phillips class, you need this many boxes. There's a, I got you on there. You can just look at the camera over here. Or you can go right there. Okay. There is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these boxes against that wall for my class this weekend. And they, they get full and you know, we take them and wash them and dry them and then we fold them. But um, we go through so many towels, you've got to have a clean place to put the dirty towels. And, um, and back to my point, you, you can try to preserve your towels by getting them, uh, get them so they're not exposed to the air, they're right. in a liquid, put a soap in there, and then right. right away put them in the washer and the dryer. And maybe they'll come out and be soft and you keep yeah. using them. If they come out crunchy, and, you know, because the coating's dried, well, they were going to do that if you just threw them into a container right. anyway. Right. So you've got nothing to lose and you've got to wash them anyway. So that's how my brain works. Scary thought, huh? Yeah, one problem is a lot of times the moisture in the air <laughs> mm -hmm. hardens it. Oh, okay. That's <laughs> so, why I love having so, the chemistry around. <laughs> so it's actually the, you know, it's the it's it's hardening as it's exposed to air, I mean, water in the air. So if you put it in there, some coatings may even harden more. Yep. That's a good point, and uh, I, I know just enough about chemistry to know you're accurate on that point. <laughs> so. so many times you want an inexpensive towel, but yep. it, it needs to be good to wipe off the That's right. coating, and you may just have to throw it in, yep. throw it away, and just build it into your price. Yep, and, and that is, you know, if you good go group. up and, and you study this in, in all the different social media worlds, 
you find that's what guys have been doing is they try to find a high quality towel that's cheap because mm -hmm. they know they're going to toss it. Right. Yep. So uh, sometimes there's just no uh, perfect scenario, you know. Did you cover uh, everything? Was that all the different um, washings? I, I actually, uh, we covered this, we covered that. I did bring out the wheel and tire bucket. Um, I always like to show this because it's, because it is part of car washing. Um, and also, if you ever take the uh, IDA uh, skills validation test, which we are both a recognized trainers, so right. we, we proctor that test. I never liked that word proctor. Uh, we give that test. And um, one of the questions on the test is how many buckets, this is, you know, you know in, in, a, in a perfect world, how many bucks does it take to do a professional wash job? And the answer is? Dose. Three. Oh, three. The, yeah. the wheel. Oh, you yeah, just yeah. failed. No. <laughs> And I'm a recognized trainer. Uh, you need your wash. They, they recommend the two bucket method and a dedicated yep. what they call the dirty bucket. And, and I always what dirty bucket? I don't want to I want a clean bucket with my wheel cleaning brushes in there. Uh, but but when you spray a wheel cleaner or a, 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 a tire cleaner onto the wheel and tire and then you clean it, it's some you know while it's dwelling at some point you got to bring your brush up to it. And it doesn't work good to bring a dry brush and a brush with just water doesn't work good. So I always mix up car wash soap and then. Um, uh, you want to go hand me that? Walk around there front and grab sure. that. Sure. We'll make a little space here, and I'll show you. These are the these are my recommended brushes if you want to really get in there and get the job. This is uh, this is the Speedmaster uh, Wooly Wheel Wooly, and I like this because it's got this nylon handle. I mean, you can if you're trying to get the barrel clean. I mean, you can you can really get in there and clean. You need this one. Uh, this is Speedmaster, and of course, everybody knows the reason you want this is so you can get behind the spokes and mm -hmm. get around brake calipers and c complicated areas. They make a tiny one. Um, I don't use this one too much. But I use that a lot on my motorcycle. On your motorcycle. This is the mother's uh, wheel well brush. I use it for the wheel wells, but also if I'm doing an engine detail, if you pop the hood up, it's really hard to reach the back of the hood, and the first thing you do is the inside of the hood. So I use this to get mm -hmm. the back parts that I can't reach on the inside of a hood. And this is... Uh, what the hell do they call these things? Miracle brush? Something like that. A detail brush? Or? A hub? You didn't call it a wheel? <laughs> it's a, a brush. A cleaning I, brush. A detailing I, brush. They got a some name. Brush. The ultimate brush Fend. or something. Oh. But this is for getting around, uh, for me, I like to do, get around the, um, the valve stem. Oh, okay. Without breaking the valve stem off or get around and like emblems. emblems. Yeah. You know, and, and of course emblems on cars, things like that. This is my favorite brush. This is the Wheel Woolies Boar's Hair Black wheel face brush. I think there's eight words in the name of that brush. This is 35 bucks. If you don't have one of these, you buy one and then you go, yep, that guy was right. This is the best brush I've ever had. What this is for is besides the wheel face is the grill. Getting mm. into the grill. All these cars have these fancy grills. You can't, you, you can't wash a grill with this or any of these mitts, but you can with this. So ideally you want to have two or three, one dedicated for wheels and tires, one for grills mm. and one for the interior. If you're cleaning vinyl seats or Anything, uh, vinyl door panels, this is a great brush. And why, here's why this brush is so good. The bristles aren't so stiff that it's pokey sharp and scratches, and they're not so s limp that they're useless. They're the perfect mm. blend. It's like a Goldilocks and the Three Bears of oh. brushes. And then I machine That's like a never everything. ending bucket. Show them what this is. You know what that is. Nylon That's brush. This <laughs> seems like it's a nylon brush. We use it for right? carpets. Carpet. Uh, that would be good for that, yeah? Yeah. Um, he said that to you, use it uh, for tires because we use a Tampico brush for tires. Tampico, Tampico. We got Tampico brushes. Did you know Tampico is a weed that grows in Mexico? I know it was a weed, but I knew it was a real. Uh, yeah, it's a real. It's a real weed. <laughs> just, just yeah. What type of weed? <laughs> I don't know. It's a, <laughs> a lot of weeds grow it's in a weed. Mexico. <laughs> no, it's, it's uh, the Tampico weed. Obviously. What are you doing? You're like all over the place. Mike just left Jim up there to. By this himself. is how we scrub Be tires sexy. here. So, if you haven't moved up to machine scrubbing tires yet, try it. You'll never go back. Uh, you can use a cordless drill and put a um, a Cyclo Aqua brush. Just cream mm. the threads out, stick it in the drill, and that's you do it with the drill. But that way you don't get shocked. I think our flex rep over here just kind of just had a shrivel go up his spine and say, "Cream the threads out." Cream you the threads out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I and I have a skill electric a cordless drill. It's here. It's right back here. I'll show you. Uh oh. Here we go. I started something. I'm sorry, people. Well, the thing is, is you can buy a cordless drill a lot cheaper than the Flex PE14. But what I try to tell people is once you start machine scrubbing, um, it's a great excuse to spend the money on the PE14. 
I'm sure Flex would say something different. I think they'd rather have the 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 bigger purchase, but. Hey. No, no. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I endorse buying the uh, PE14 for uh, machine scrubbing uh, interiors. We're going to machine scrub the vinyl top on that car over there. Or which one? Which tomorrow one? on the um, 1977 Oh, oh that's the Lincoln. one that I can't see. That's, yeah. That's and, uh, but yeah, you just take the um, Cyclo, Cyclo polishers. They make four different brushes. They make a black, they make a white, they make a gray, and they make a green. The green works the best, but you just, but it's threaded. It has a 5 16 inch thread. Mm. There's probably one back there. Uh, if you look around, Mike, on that red cart, look on that red cart right behind you. Bottom sh second shelf. See, and you thought you weren't going to be in this video. <laughs> and, you said red cart, right? Yeah, the red cart. The red cart's yeah. here, right there. Yeah, there. You see a, uh, any kind of green, dirty looking brush? Let's see. I got this. There, I trip over these things. I got so many out here. But you just cream out the threads and then you just take and scrub the tires by machine. Once you machine scrub tires, you'll never want to go back and try to do this, okay? It's just so inefficient. This isn't green, but this is one it's I It's aqua. Yeah, all right, we need to talk about colors here. <laughs> okay, so this has 5 16 thread. It, it threads onto the Cyclo brush. The Cyclo is, of course, a tool with two heads, and it's for scrubbing things, but what I do is I just take and, uh, well, see, the reason I say cream out the threads is because some guy says, well, Mike, if I put that brush in there, won't it destroy the threads? And my question to him is, well, what else are you going to use it on? <laughs> <laughs> you know, if, if you want one that you don't cream out the threads, then buy a second one. Boom. Now you can machine scrub tires. It's much better, it's faster, it does a better job. And uh, a lot of times when I have cars in here, I don't even um, I don't even wash the wheels and tires. I take an all-in-one rubber vinyl cleaner conditioner, mm -hmm. spray the tire down, agitate it with that, wipe with the towel and I'm done. I don't even need running water. I <laughs> just clean it with that and it works so good. But this is this is the better way to go in my opinion just because it's got more power and also you can also then use it as a rotary buffer. Ah, dual <laughs> and, purpose. You know, in my boat detailing class, people want to know, do these have enough power? Whenever I teach a class, I, uh, Saturday we're doing a rotary buffer only class. And out of all the rotaries I got over there, the first ones to go are the cordless. Everybody wants the cordless, and they got tons mm -hmm. of power. Power is not the issue when it comes to the rotary, the flex rotary at least, you know. And the battery technology is the best. So if you've been looking for a reason to spend the money to buy the PE14 or tell the wife, the girlfriend, you know, mom and dad, <laughs> Whoever. For your birthday or Christmas. <laughs> sugar mama, sugar this daddy. This is what you want. So anyway, I just wanted to share that because this is part of washing. Those are the brushes everybody needs. And of course, look, there's a grit guard in there too. And I label this so nobody gets confused and puts a nice clean wash mitt in my wheel and tire bucket. All right, are you good? Are you, are you done now? I think so. I got a quick question yeah, for sure. you. I see this, this uh, Corvette here, it's got white, white walls. Mm -hmm. One thing didn't cover. What do you use on white, white walls? Do you still use this? Oh, for mm -hmm. sure. Okay, and that'll get, yeah. that'll get it off? Okay. Uh, you know, usually for a tire cleaner, I usually use the Tough Shine. Okay. Um, back there on the shelf is a can of Comet. Comet, you know, if you've got really bad white walls. What happens with the white walls sometimes is, is there's a thing that takes place in rubber called blooming. So uh, rubber manufacturers, uh, put an ingredient called anti ozonant into the rubber, mm -hmm. and it's supposed to migrate out when tires are at speed. Tires at speed, that means like at 55 miles an hour. So, a uh, centrifugal force causes this, this ingredient to migrate out, so it's always refreshing the sidewall and it keeps the sidewall from cracking and fading mm -hmm. and drying out. But a natural process that happens is when the anti ozonant in the rubber migrates out, it meets ozone in the air, it turns brown. That's why your tires turn brown. It's not the dressing. It's mm. a natural process. Of course, you and me, we look at that and go, oh, my tires look ugly, you know, because we, we want them black. We don't want them brown. Right. So, um, so what happens with white walls is that blooming, it migrates into the white portion of the rubber. And because it's not on it, it's actually in it. It can be very hard to clean. So sometimes a little comet in a brush will get them really clean. That's, that sounds like a good answer. We used to, used to use a wire brunch. Brush. Brass brush. Brass. Yep. Brass brush. And that, brass that, brush. Was, that, was, that was not easy. Yeah, it's a lot of work. I don't know about putting a brass brush on this tool No, but maybe, maybe that nylon brush <laughs> That would no longer be scrubbing. <laughs> that would be grinding. Uh, but yeah, there's a bunch of different ways to skin that cat. You know, there's some a really good uh, rubber cleaning products out there. But Tough Shine is one I usually go to and uh, maybe a Comet once in a while. All right, you good? I'm good. All right, you all know what time it is. It is time for viewer questions. Yes, you ask, I relay and the two talking heads on the other side, they will answer. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and pull me up on here so that way I'm not just a head talking from the nether. 
And let's get this zoomed out just a little bit. One so thing I did forget to mention though, uh, if you look at the labels down here on the wash and the rinse, the reason you actually need to label your buckets is because once you, once you wash a couple panels, you'll bring enough soap from your mitt from the wash bucket into the rinse bucket that they'll both look like wash buckets. Mm -hmm. So you need to label your buckets. All right. And guess who sells a sticker? Oh, uh, gee. Uh, <laughs> hmm. Auto geek. We sell everything. Okay, we have, I'm just going to go down through a couple of these. So uh, let's go Majid. I want to say I said your oh. name right. He's Happy Spaces. The brush. There's a science to brushes. The reason this is a tire scrubbing brush is because the bristles are short. And so they don't wiggle as much so you get better scrubbing action. It doesn't wear your arm muscles out. Mm. That's yeah. why that's a tire brush. Well, there you go. Uh, Matt Cecil, yes, that is a Lotus, and that is uh, serial number one out of 100. It is you the wanna... number one of 100 of the 100-year anniversary Lotus Turbo Spree. Yeah. Twin it's, Turbo. It's a cool little, cool little car. Um, Ajid giving us some okay signs. And we, we're going to let pr absolute strangers buff that out this weekend. Because <laughs> that's what we do. We live life on the edge. Glad it's not my car. <laughs> Mike's favorite saying. Morgan, hello, hello. Uh, Bahavik, I want to say I said your name right. Thumbs up to you. Uh, Richard, he's saying good afternoon, everyone. Uh, what's up, guys, from Renondo Beach? Where is Renondo Beach? Is that California? It's in California, I think. California. Uh, all right, we have Dinesh from India. He's saying hello and greetings. Uh, William, William Ruse. Oh, I love your name. I know I'm ahead of the game, but if there are any situation where you would want to use a wash wax combo, you know that's an option. Um, uh, I've always wondered how they actually how does something clean and also leave something behind, but they do work. Uh, we sell my favorite are actually the uh, SiO2 washes, the Wolfgang one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Wolfgang one. Um, we just launched another one in the DP line, but I've only washed one car there, but it did work. But um, somehow they're able to clean the car, flush the dirt off, and leave something behind and it makes water beat up. And what I did a couple years ago when we introduced the, um, the Wolfgang one is when I was doing my traveling road shows, is I would pick a neglected car and that obviously had no care at all. And I would uh, tape off one half of the hood and wash just one side and then throw water up there. And you can instantly see water just beating up on the side mm -hmm. that was washed just from washing the car. So they do work. So I would gravitate towards an SiO2 wash and then actually use it every other wash. Don't use it every other time. I think you could actually get a buildup. Mm. You, you coat your car just by washing it, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. But well, it's for those people that may not have be able to wash. They just have X amount of time. So this would be a perfect opportunity yeah. for that. Yeah. Okay, they moving. Away. They wash away. So they want a little more shine. They want that little more boost. Yeah. So it may not, yeah, they just put a little oil in it, you know, to create that shine. There you go, from the chemist himself. We have Hiram Lopez. How's it going? Hi from HTL Detailing from San Diego. Hello, Hiram. And if I remember correctly, you won something. You won another swag last week. Um, Christian Reich, all the way from Germany. Greetings. Greetings back to you. We need to go back to we Germany. We need to go uh, back I, to Germany. I want some <laughs> uh, uh, bratwurst. It's too bad we don't know any of flex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As I look over <laughs> to the flex, flex right? <laughs> the flex right. Yeah. Um, all right, let's go here. We have Freddie. Hello, everyone from Mexico. Uh, Christopher. Uh, 67 GT350, is that part of the class this weekend? Everything yes, that you see here yeah. is part of the class. Yeah, it looks good on camera, but if I throw a swirl finder light, it's all swirled out, and it needs to be clayed. So, yeah, we're going we're gonna to do all the paint correction and coat this one, and also go over uh, 303 products for the vinyl top. The Mustang over here is even more swirled out. Again, it won't, it won't look like that on camera, but the Mustang, the Boss over here, the windshield is completely scratched up so yeah, let me see if I can uh, get bo over. both the Corvette and the boss we're gonna start out doing glass polishing on both these cars they're actually gonna be positioned here in the center and then I'll have two cars on the outside of this garage and what I do is um, you cannot have I have 22 people in this class you cannot have 22 mm -hmm. people polish glass because you know, uh, 18 of them are going to be doing this <laughs> while they watch four people work. So what I do is I set up two cars on the outside and then I ask each of the students as they feel they have the time or want or so inclined to do so to cycle through and I teach them how to polish glass. And I'll tell you, after you have 20, 20 22 people cycle through and buff on a windshield, it gets pretty clean. It's yeah. pretty defect free. And less work for you. And then we'll buff out the paint because we're going to get 
uh, cerium oxide splatter all over the place. Okay. All there's right. my cer there's my uh, glass pulsion cards right over there. All right, let me move on, because um, I know we still got to do some things for the class later on. Yep, got to move cars. Uh, Mamet, Mamet, I think that's how you say your name. Is that soapy foam that you lay on a car biodegradable and safe for the environment? I, I, I think I think he's when he's foaming a car. Yeah, you have to read every every car manufacturer, a car care manufacturer mm -hmm. is going to formulate differently. So. Do your, do your due diligence in your research and pick one that states that on the label and hope that they're telling the truth. The thing about using a biodegradable soap is a lot of times you're gonna remove things off the car that aren't biodegradable. <laughs> it's kinda like, it's kinda like we got an engine degreaser that's biodegradable, but the sludge that gets off the engine isn't. Right. You know, so uh, sometimes, you know, things aren't what they appear. Okay, all right, and this one's for you, Jim. What is the car wash called in Chicago? Car wash called, is that what you're saying? No, what is your, your shop called? Yeah, Chicago? Simon's Shine Shop. All right, and Self Plug, where are you located at? It's in Lincoln Park, okay. uh, is it Chicago. Go check them yeah, out, Just people. west of DePaul University. Go check them out. Check us out. Uh, we have Mario saying blessings. Blessings back to you. <laughs> oh, I, you know, I, I just love watching all these people tune in. And the Lotus is, must be the star of the show. Greetings from Trinidad. Do I spy a Lotus Esprit back there? Yes. I mean, mm. it's kind of like tucked in there, but kind of not. That's we are going to compound, polish it, and coat it. And All probably right. hit the glass. All right. Uh, we have Char Charla Lampos. Charla Lampos? Am I right? Uh, hi, everyone from Rhodes Island, Greece. We need to go Greece. to Greece, too. I want to go to Greece. I want to go to Greece. Uh, and then we got Michael O'Neill from Canada. Next week, my red eye will be here. It was due to hit the train station in Orlando at 3.43 on Saturday. So hopefully our- How exciting. I can't wait. Um, we have Madib again. Uh, I used O&R to no rinse as my clay disc lube. Yep, that yep. Worked, that's a great mm -hmm. product. I love Dr. Uh, Dr. David Gaddusi. Mr. Gaddusi, he's a PhD organic chemist. He's one of the only chemists I know that it worked for. There's only about a dozen car paint manufacturers in the world. I mean, mm -hmm. the OEM level. And he, he helped to create base coat, clear coat technology. And if you ever go to like a Lowe's or a Depot and you see a paint thinner or mineral spritz and it has the brand Clean Strip with a K, Clean Dash Strip, it's a common a solvent mm -hmm. company. He also formulated a lot of those formulas also, so a really sharp guy. I didn't know that, but mm -hmm. good to know. Well, that's what I do. I impart knowledge. Thank you. <laughs> I do a brain dump. I, I spit out sarcasm. Yes. That's yes, what I the, do. <laughs> sarcasm spreader. And Jim makes chemicals for you. That's right. So <laughs> it's kind of like all goes around here. All right. Then in the home, in a homie, in a homie. I don't know if that's what right, that is, but watched the glass polishing video and had a question. Had a small crack repaired on my windshield. Would polishing a light scratch out of the other side of the repair compromise the repair? I would, I, if you're buffing on the repair, then my answer would be yes, because mm -hmm. what they do is they put some sort of high-tech plastic in there, basically. Like a resin. Right? Yeah, yeah. Resin. So resin. You put this resin that hardens. And there. you're going to be sanding on it, or you're going to be buffing right on it. In that uh, heat? Yeah, the heat, uh, it may not be a good combination. Why would I just leave that one alone? I leave it alone too. I've heard that it's supposed to be stronger than the rest of the glass, that glue, but I wouldn't want to test that. I, you could always work <laughs> around it. Yeah. You know? work around. yeah. So. Okay, let's move on. We got Dave here. Uh, thanks again for another interesting educational show. I do want to know why you use fine clay only. I'm using the rubberized style after years of Meguiar's clay. Okay, so uh, let me answer that question. Oh, here's uh, this is based up. upon experience. This happened to me. So normally, uh, we always talk about doing a test spot to find out if the paint is hard or soft, and then mm -hmm. you can determine your process. You know, because the goal of doing paint correction on a car is to remove the defects, but to use the least aggressive process to get the job done, so you leave the most paint on the car. And uh, I always think it's funny because I see lots of people out there saying use the least aggressive process. They forget the other part to leave the most paint on the car. <laughs> they go together. Okay, so. If you don't do your test spot till after you've washed and dried the car, then you don't know if it has hard paint or soft paint. So if you take a rubberized tool and you wash a car and it has soft paint, but you don't know it yet, mm -hmm. 
you could just mar the hell out of that thing. And then you bring it back in and look at it and go, wow, look at all the marring. I mar, mar by the way, is the kind, fluffy word for scratch. <laughs> so um, I think I had, I can't remember the car, but it was black and I used a rubberized tool of some sort and brand in the wash process and marred the hell out of the paint. And then I had to get all the marring out when I corrected it. I was gonna correct it anyway, but I, nowadays I, uh, remember I'm not OCD, I'm lazy. <laughs> I don't wanna create any more work than I have to. So what I like to do is wash the car, get it clean, and then use an ultra fine grade clay, use the least aggressive process to mechanically decontaminate it I can, so I induce the least amount of marring or scratching, so I have the least amount of paint correction work to do. Oh. That's how my brain works. So, but everybody can use what they want to. I, the rubberized tools, they work great. You know, you got the nano towel, you got the nano mitt. Uh, Grios makes it, we make it in our, um, our uh, Speedmaster Speed Master line. And they do work great, and they do save you a step. The whole idea is to get the car washed, then rinse, then mechanically decontaminate it while it's still wet, and you save a step because you don't got to spray a clay lube on a completely washed, clean and dry car and get it wet again. Mm -hmm. See, so it saves you that step. But if the paint is soft and you don't know it because you don't do the test pad till after you get the washing out of the car, you run the risk of potentially marring the hell out of it. I think it was a black uh, Maserati I did. Okay. And that's, that's, that's because you don't see the damage you're doing as you're well, doing yeah, it, right? right? You're doing it, you don't see it because it's already it's wet. So it's all right. wet, yeah. So yes, a million ways to skin that cat. Okay, moving along. We have Protonic Storm. Even after I hosed the car off, I still f had fine bits of grit in the bucket. A grit guard is a must. Yes, yes it mm -hmm. is. Be safer than sorry. And the lambs are great people. Yes, they are. Yes. Everybody's copying them yep. nowadays, but get the grit guard. Chris is a wild man. He is a wild man. <laughs> he is a wild man. <laughs> Anybody knows Chris Lamb knows he's a wild man. Yeah. All right. We have Scott here. Here, here in eastern Canada, we use two to three buckets always. We wash dirty autos, not Florida vehicles. We have dirt roads. <laughs> hey, are you saying our cars ain't dirty? Uh, we have dirt roads, salty roads, salty spray, environmental debris. Well, move to Florida. <laughs> we have crabs that Everybody you run over. Everybody else is. Move to Florida. Join yeah. the world. <laughs> I think he's saying that we don't have dirty cars. Here. Yeah, we yeah. our cars, you know, when I lived in uh, Southern California, same thing. They just don't get that dirty because it doesn't rain. So you don't have that. Uh, road mm. film comes from all the cars that drip oil as they drive down the road, mixes with the rain water and the dirt. You know, there's a lot of dirt mm. and air lands on the road. Then when it rains, the cars in front of you throw that film onto your car. And what happens over and over again, that's where road film comes from. In, in Europe, in the UK, they call it traffic film. But it's an oily dirt film that gets, builds up on your car. And you're right, in the Canada, you're going to have a lot of that on the lower panels everywhere. you got to wash it off. But I'll say this. We have sunshine like 90% of the time. It is so hot outside right now. What do you have? <laughs> you have snow like 90% of the time. No, just kidding. Just kidding you. Um, all right. We have Morris or Boris. Bor yeah, Boras. We keep our pool uh, at 87. This is so <laughs> nice. Hello, water. guys from hot Ecuador. Day, warm uh, pool. All right. Um, uh, who is the original vendor of the washing machine, if not GD? I'm going to leave that one alone. Uh, Scott uh, McLean loved the towel idea. See, you guys can. Scotty, I know Scotty. You know Scotty? Oh yeah. I think I know. Scotty you know, McLean. I have a full article on that. I know everybody likes videos on that, but I think it's called "How to Correctly or How to Safely Wash a Coated Car." Add Mike Phillips, it'll pull right up. Shows me watching uh, Black Maserati using the multiple towel method. Okay. It also shows that cool brush doing the grill. You know, so there's all kinds of cool things in there. All right, we have Nick. Uh, always a pleasure to watch you guys here in Sweden. It's 9.30 p.m., so for GT, not the... All right. So time for GT and not the car. Okay, there you go. <laughs> that works. Uh, uh, hey, Chris. Chris Wayne, woo, caught a live stream. Hey, Chris, you got a shout out. There you go. Um, dun, dun, dun. We have Arvid. What's the reason for sticking with fine? Oh, we just answered that one. Sorry, if you just rewind. Yeah, the, yeah, uh, the fine gray clay. Uh, no, I'm not getting into that, people. We're not starting a debate here about this stuff. Chris Pena, I see what you're doing there. We're not doing that. Um, <laughs> Okay, here, uh, Marvin G. Hey, he's right. Let your budget be your guide. What's the best this or that? Your budget will reveal that to you. Yes. Never mm -hmm. spend somebody else's it's money. money. Yep. yep. Right. Uh, oh, and I love this, Martin G. Thank you for coming in. This is, I think, in a relay of the other things up above. Martin G. The best detailer is you, with quotation marks, when a customer makes you their final decision. Yes. Good one. 
And yeah. Da -da 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 -da. All right, best auto, best wash mitt, soap for towels and or mitts. I think personal preference on that one. Oh, you know, uh, when it comes to things like that, I would say uh, pick an established brand. You know, if, if, uh, if you've got a brand you really like, an established brand. Um, there's lots of microfiber detergents out there. I think the thing that the, most people want to know is why use a microfiber detergent over a normal laundry detergent? And the consensus that has been formed for that reason is it keeps the, it preserves the softness of the fiber instead of turning them crunchy. So that's what I've been told, and you know, I'll let the chemist <coughs> counter me if he wants to. Actually, this next question is for you, Jim. Good. Um, does Dr. Beasley's have a water spot remover chemical safe for paint or glass? Yes, we do. There you go. What's the yeah. name of it? Water spot remover. Get it at uh, Auto Geek. I love simple names. Uh, that was Kirby, by the way. Hi, Kirby. How you doing oh, today? Oh, Kirby. Kirby. Uh, Stewart's Automotive Interior Exterior Solutions. Is there a water purification? Is there a water purification system that you can remain for a mobile tech? See our spot. I, I don't know, but here's one of the things about water purifiers. Um, and we found this out like eight years ago when we made that video on the CR spotless water purifying system, is it came with a, um, it came with its own uh, trigger sprayer. Um, in fact, hold on a second, I'll go get it. Uh-oh, he's, he's off. All right, while, while he's getting off on that, uh, Dan the, at Muscle Express, hi Dan. Great looking red Mustang. I wonder why he's saying that, Mike. <laughs> I don't know. He's the one that built the he red built Mustang. It? He built the red Mustang. So yes, it is pretty pretty bad. B A. Um, while we're waiting for Mike to get back, uh, this is Jonathan Michael. I just picked up the Dr. Beasley's products from their Simmons Shine shop. Okay. Their L hold on. Their LSP line and LS10 is legit. Exclamation. <laughs> Thank uh, you. LS10 is a nice product. Their MX ceramic kit is also no joke. Exclamation. Can you zoom mm -hmm. in on this tiny little letters? I can. Hold on. Right. See how that says shower? Yep. Okay, so they, they come with this actual sprayer right here, and it says to use the shower setting, and the reason why is because it restricts how much water can flow out of the nozzle, which allows the water to go through the dual chamber system slow enough for the beads, whatever the magic beads are in there, to extract mm -hmm. the contaminants out of the water. If you put this on jet or blast the car, you're going to just be blasting with contaminated water because you didn't let it go through the, the cylinder slow enough to actually pull the contaminants out. So the filter systems are really only good for the rinse cycle, and it's going to be shower setting. So. Okay. All right, moving on. Uh, we have just so much knowledge up here that's <laughs> embarrassing nowadays. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my Self wife asked me to pick up right like one thing at the store on the way home I can't remember. Oh, but hold I on. can lock in <laughs> stuff like that. This is Mike's know. theme song when he's going home. <laughs> yep, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now moving right along. Douglas, Douglas Photographics. The DuPont car wash opens by zipping off the string or pull the tab on the other side of the cam near the top. It's oh, the cardboard oh, lid right. similar to the Quaker oatmeal container. Right there. Yeah. Look at Look that. At that. Oop, I'm gonna leave. This is this is virgin. It's never been used. Okay, uh, Stephen, uh, love these guys. Why we love you too? <laughs> I literally just came on here and I wanted to ask how to scrub my vintage tires and boom. <laughs> See, it's called that mind implant. We place these little squibs in your brain, and then you just telepath into us, and we broadcast it out. So. And also, just so you know, if 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 you do ever go the cordless rotary. Um, a, a approach. Uh, this is a four and seven eighths backing plate, and this is a five inch a brush. And we sell two of these at Auto Geek. One has short bristles, one has long. You want the long bristles, and it's sold under the term DA carpet brush or heavy duty DA dual action DA carpet brush. Uh, otherwise, if you go up there on the Auto Geek search engine and try to find it, you'll, you'll never find it. They should actually put in there for like tire brush, you know. Mm. 
All right. like that. Mm. All right, uh, let's try to get a little bit of a speed round here. It's like 422 right now. Gotcha. All right, Sean Daves, Mike's wandering around is Yancey's favorite thing. I'm glad you feel my pain. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's like, it's like trying to nail down jello to a tree or something. It's like you just can't do it. I'm just like, I got three cameras going, I got buttons to push in here. It's like, I'm gonna go over here, you know? And it's like, yeah. Hey, thank Jim you. can carry the load. All right, thank you. Uh, Scott Mattern, I have a PE14. I recommend it highly. Props to you over there. Oh, there you go. My favorite, one of my favorite tools right here. <laughs> David Stratton, I'm not smoking that Tampico weed. Uh, Mike, my, my brush fell off. Oh, all right, here's Kirby coming back. Right, Mike, my brush fell off this backing plate. What is the adhesive to fix it or send it back to AG? Yeah, you know, the thing I That's try to do That's the one is, that you're talking about right there. Yeah, the thing I do is I, uh, what happens is the, the Velcro attachment on the back of the brush is so strong that when you try to pull the brush off the backing plate, mm. it tends to pull the Velcro off the back of the brush. So instead of taking it off, buy two backing plates and two brushes mm. and just put it together and never take it off. There you and go. here's a little tip for, I know I'm telling you to spend money, but I'm trying to really get it down the right do, path. And we're trying to do quick round two. But, so. uh, and real quickly, <laughs> when I'm done, I take and run the water and just put this on a clean place in the driveway and just run it. It already usually has soap from your tire cleaner on there and just run mm. it and flush water in there and it'll self clean it or take it into the sink and run the water and and uh, just run the run the thing and it'll clean the brush and then zing it up let centrifugal force do this thing and it'll dry it for you too okay all right speed around but i try goop glue <laughs> <laughs> trying to go through your it's a flexible silicone membrane okay here we go jonathan michael i think he's doing a shout out to you jim uh nsp exclamation uh um uh, asterisk so i'm Thinking that's a shout out to you. Uh, Jerry O'Brien Hay from Jerry and Grace. Hey! Um, Phil Dudson. I, you know, this is the type that bosses management really likes to see. The only website I buy my products, love you guys. <laughs> okay. Testimonial. A testimonial. testimonial. Uh, Matthew, yes, the final finish. I don't know what that was for. Um, Russ, I used the Blackfire foam soap today and got practically no foam in my foam cannon. Follow directions. Did I miss something here? Is I don't it know. well? It could it, be. It could be too much soap. It could be too much soap, soap, and it also could be the foam gun that you have. You oh. might not have had the opening up uh, far enough. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, you've got to go read my article, how to use the foam gun, and. There's a, there's a there's a there's an air screw on the top mm -hmm. of that thing. When you buy one of these things, take a pair of pliers and just tighten the shit out of that thing because you really, you, yeah, you don't want it to come loose. What it does is let air in, so you get less foam. Well, who wants less foam? So tighten it down. And there's also a little screw on the other side of the rod, the the, the metering rod. And what that the, what that nut is for is because it's bigger than the hole that the metering rod goes through, so you don't pull the thing through and the little ball bearing and the spring go flying out. So take a pair of pliers and tighten the hell out of All that right, thing now, too. What if he's talking about the foam cannon? Is there an adjustment on the foam cannon? You know, I don't use foam cannons because I don't drag out pressure washers. I always okay. use foam guns. Okay. So I'm not an expert. There may be the a setting like it, like a, like we were just stating yeah. to you. You may have had too much soap in there, or yeah, maybe go, maybe not enough. Or, there's something wrong somewhere, and uh, I'd go to the Detailing 101 Facebook group, post a picture of it, and ask somebody, "What am I doing wrong?" Yeah, then I'll so. see it there. Then I'll be able to really able to look at it a little bit better. And those that don't know, I run the Detailing 101 forum. So if you ever need to find anything over there and really have a dire question, hit me up over there. Okay, uh, Philip Stewart. All right, we already said that. Uh, oh, Don, I got interrupted. Did you go over drying the car? Uh, we not just kind of touched on it lightly. This um, is more of a washing, not so much drying. Yeah, more of a washing thing. Um, I, I did bring out, this is a leather chamois. There's the absorber over there. Back there on the wall is my flex dryers. Um, I actually have an Ego leaf blower, which I have yet to use yet, but I already know it's going to work great. But, um, you know, the big thing about drying is uh, same thing we kind of talked about at the, the beginning of the video. Whatever it is that you're using that's going to touch the paint, you got to keep it clean and uncontaminated. And um, the least evasive method is called the blotting method. So you would just take and, uh, like, here, let me walk over here, Yancey. Oh, hold on. We, we sell go. these things. I got these up here because I show these for drying uh, uh, canvas tops. 
when it comes to the canvas top, you got to do everything you can to not fray them and make them fuzzy. Are you? But, oh, hold on, hold on now, now. See, but, now yeah, you've got me going everywhere. Wet, you would lay this on here like this and just kind of spread it around and lift it up. And the point being is you never pushed anything against the paint. Mm. So it's the least evasive method to dry a car. So there's one way to do it. And you can do it with any drying chime. You just lay it down, blot the water off. But uh, I'm a big fan of uh, some kind of high power leaf blower. But the thing about, like the, uh, the, the Master Blaster from um, uh, uh, Metrovac, okay? Uh, mm -hmm. But the thing about those tools is you have to have a good coat of wax, a sealant or a coating on there so water already wants to beat up. Um, I made a TV commercial for, um, uh, the Master Blaster for Metrovac on um, that was like the Dennis three Gage's years show ago. a couple years ago. And I called up the president of the company. I says, look, I, I, I want to make sure you're okay with me saying this. What I'm going to say is because the audience that watches my classic car is not the OCD audience like mm -hmm. us that keeps our cars waxed up. And if, I didn't want them buying that tool at almost 500 bucks only to take it out to wash their 57 Chevy and not have it work because they don't keep something that makes water beat up on the 57 Chevy. So it's the, the, the air movers, anything that's going to move air over the car really is only functional if water is beating up on its own. Jim, okay. how do you guys uh, dry your cars at your shop? We use something, a waffle weave towel like this, and it's, it's wet. So when we wash it, we spin it out, and, and that helps wick the, the water off faster. Okay. And I, I, I use these all the time. There's so many great drying towels, but here's, here's the case I can make for this. Wa waffle weave drying towel, flat weave, can't get contaminated, okay? So a lot of the really cool drying towels that everybody likes, they got a loop fiber. Now things get stuck in the loop. Now they scratch the paint. So these are pretty much Bubba proof. I mean, you just, you can't make a mistake with one of these things. So that's why I use them. Okay, let me move along. Um, Richard coming on. Apparently Wesley's tire cleaner has been bought out by Black Magic and not nearly as effective or whitening white letters on tires. Apart from using those white pins, which I'll never use, what would you recommend for cleaning white letters? Like the white letters on tires. Yeah, um, a brass brush and uh, try Bon Ami or Comet, you know, or Tough Shine Tire Cleaner. Tough Shine is my go-to tire cleaner, and but I always machine scrub everything, white letters, everything, and then, you know, I've got a whole bunch of articles on machine scrubbing, white letter BF Goodrich TA radials, fire sewn white ovals. I've cleaned all that stuff, and I usually get by with uh, the Tough Shine. Okay. Right. Yeah, it needs elbow grease. Elbow grease. Yeah. Elbow grease yeah. is what, it's, That's it's, part what of it needs. Yeah, it's right there, here. But, <laughs> but this provides the elbow grease. Yeah, right that there. provides the elbow grease, yeah. and then a good degreaser. Yep. Whatever these brands, I've been, if those brands work, use them. Okay, uh, Chris Tracy, hello there. Thanks for all the info. You're welcome. That's the reason why we do this. Um, I surely hope Dave is joking here. I wash my car with a blue scotch bright pad and Dawn dish soap with my pressure washer. I surely <laughs> hope you're joking on that. Hey, when you're doing that, make sure you rub, move that uh, scotch bright pad in the same direction so you, have, <laughs> you keep all the scratches in the same. You know what? I'm surprised that hasn't came out is like some sort of pattern that instead of matte, how it's just matte, they just have it like where it's stripped, you know, like. Yeah, well, you want a grain. A grain. No, that's yeah. what I'm looking for. You don't want swirls. You want, you want a, a nice grain. uniform grain hey, scratch you pattern. wouldn't notice the swirls. I mean, the swirls. Kind of like a DeLorean, you know, DeLorean. Exactly. They have to rub that stainless steel in a, a single line mm -hmm. so they keep this. The, the sh it has a, a grain to it. All right, here, let's go on. Jerry O'Brien, do new cars right off the, right off the lot always need chemical and uh, mechanical decontamination. You know, um, there's a there's a shortcut that I take from US One to Commerce. You probably know yep. of it. And there's a big Wallace. There's a big car dealership. And out behind this, on the main road, is a big beautiful dealership. On the back is a field, just completely filled with, with cars sitting cars. out there, yeah. just getting dumped on. Whatever's there, there's airports so they get jet fuel on them and pollen and everything. So. Yeah, you know, uh, by the time you take possession of a car, here's what you do. Wash it carefully, like we explained here. Get a clean sandwich baggie and lightly fill the paint to see if it needs to be clayed. Well, segue into what we're going to end up doing. Um, I'm getting my red eye next, oh. next week, and Mike and I are actually going to make a series of videos on that. So we'll actually show you exactly the condition. Because I told the dealership, do nothing to the car. Just remove the plastic, whatever you got to do, but do nothing else to it. Don't touch it. Don't let your detailer guy even look at it just leave it alone and, and then what what happens from the time it's pooped out of the assembly line building, wow you know wow. <laughs> wow. by the time it's pooped out of the of wherever it's assembled and it gets to your driveway who knows what's happened yeah to i it. mean it's been on a train so that's what you got to inspect it yeah because it, it was on a truck from canada to uh minnesota i mean not minnesota yeah minnesota uh michigan sorry 
then it's got put her on a train, going to Orlando, then it's going to put her on back on a truck and come down to here. So we'll show you exactly what's going to go on with that. So. Yeah, it, it goes to a couple different processing centers, I think. By the time it leaves the factory, by the time it gets to your... Yeah, it went, yeah it went through a couple... Then the dealership does have the get, get ready program, you know, but... Yeah, I, sorry, they know me there. They Do not touch the car. <laughs> do not touch the car. All right, David Stern, hi. Do you record your class? We do snippets. No, um, not really. But uh, I use those for promos. You know, the, the, the class starts at 7.30 and goes to about 5.30 or 6. That's almost a 12-hour day <laughs> times three. There's just nobody yeah. would watch it. So the best thing to do is take the class. <laughs> okay. We have Jay Crosby, Speedmaster. Towels are amazing for drying. I highly recommend. Thank you. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, hey. Shout out to you, Mike. Hey, Mike, look forward to taking your class at SDC. Jim, I hope to see you at SDC as well. Are you going? Yes. Southern Detail Conference? Yes, I'm going. All right. I'm, I'm teaching uh, some fun stuff. I'm teaching uh, glass polishing, wet sanding, production detailing, tire coatings, and uh, something else. Can I be your assistant? You sure can. <laughs> <sighs> For your information, good way to get your new car confiscated is to provide the exact date, time, and place when it shows up. That's when it gets in Orlando. I don't know when it's getting to my dealer, so uh, i just say it. Uh, we have Chris Wayne, hello, from Central Kentucky. Hello, back to you. It's that CNN Elizabeth Mobile. Elizabeth Town, Kentucky. Remember, we shot a TV show there. Yeah. Uh, that was when you did the uh, on, uh, um, My Classic Car. Yeah, you we, did we, detailed we, the car. We detailed the car live on TV. All right. Uh, Robert, ro whoops, Robert Smith, thanks for all the info. You're welcome. Uh, hello from Deutschland. Uh, Deutschland? 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 Yeah. Is that how you say it? Deutschland? Dutch? Deutsch. Germany. Deutsch. 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 I think I said it right the first time. Deutschland. I'm coming back over there. Uh, uh, all right. Hello from Connecticut. Thank you for all the info. Question, any other cordless polisher that you recommend other than Flex and Rupes for, Rupes for the DIY people? I, you know, you can't go wrong with the Griot's Garage. Uh, their entry level to the G9. Saying cordless. Oh, cordless? The only one that I know is, what do you call it? <laughs> okay, so in my office, about 20 feet there, I have two of the other really popular cordless tools. And the tools themselves function great. The problem is the battery technology. The batteries don't last as long. They don't charge as fast. It takes longer to recharge mm -hmm. one. And they, they don't, the cycle life is of like one third. So any money you'll be saving buying the cheaper cordless tools will be eaten up in batteries. So might as well just go with the best, go with Flex. I know that sounds like an oh. ad, but I've used them all. I've, I, I had to use them and write reviews and record everything about it and submitted to the company to see if we wanted to bring them in. And at the end, my summary was, look, if we bring these in and sell them, you're going to tie up your customer care with people calling wanting to return them because they weren't happy with how long the battery lasted. So I says, why, why have that headache? The tools work fine. It's the battery technology. These things use what's called smart battery technology. We have a video for all that. Yeah, there's a yeah. chip in here that talks to the charger, there's a ch that talks to the tool. It's, it's, at this time, it's really the way to go. So. Jim, what tools do you use in your shop? We use Flex. You use Flex? Yep, love them. All right. Uh, let's go here. All right, quick, quick, quick. All right. Quick? Quick. Less than 10 words. Nestle's quick. Less than 10 words. I'm, I'm got him on limits now, people. Benji Davis, how do you guys feel about rinseless sponges, yay or nay? I, I'm not a fan, but I think they work. So that was less is, than a 10? Yeah, no. there's the big red sponge. All right. Do you guys ever use sponges in your shop? No, I'm not a fan. It doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Where does the dirt go? Where does the... You know, you know <laughs> where's that little rock okay, go? Okay, I got to <laughs> tell a story. I got to tell a story. I know where it goes in here. All right, I, I tried to get more than 10 words. Okay. I tried. Uh, when I was still working at McGuire's, there were two detailers that came around and washed all of upper management's cars. They're almost all black, okay? And one day I was out there watching this guy, uh, David Sicilian is one of them, and uh, Derek Bemis is the other, two really well-known detailers. And uh, David Sicilian was out there, and he's using a, a grout sponge from Lowe's, $2 sponge. And I looked at it, and I, I, says, I, I cringe when I think of you running that sponge over that black car. And he takes it over to a bucket and puts it in the water and goes, no, watch this, Mike. And he squeezes it, and the natural action of the sponge was to flush the water out of the sponge and flush the dirt with it. And he says he did a test one time. He took care of two different complexes washes, and for one month, they... After they detailed the cars, they washed all the cars with a grout sponge and all the rest with like a wash mitt. And then they looked at the cars and the ones that were washed with the wash mitt were more scratched up than the ones with the sponge. 
Call up David Sicilian. He's up there in Southern California somewhere, and uh, he'll tell you that story is true. But for me, like I said, I think they work. It just I just don't feel comfortable. I'm a big fan of the multiple towel method. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, quick, quick, quick. Uh, is there uh, Robert? Sorry, I forgot to put your name on there. Robert, is there a place? Is there a tip to keep pollen off a freshly washed, dried car? Yes. Put your car in a big Ziploc baggy. <laughs> Inflate it full of air. They make those things, you know, these uh, cocoons, kind of a plastic yeah. cocoon. Uh, no, you know, as long as we've got this old planet Earth spinning in a circle with wind currents and things that grow, mm -hmm. uh, trees, bushes. So you're saying just cut everything down? <laughs> go cut full concrete? Things are growing. Pave the Earth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have Detailing Law UK. Dong, dong. Concrete I'm probably going to get sued by, what do you call it, um, CSI or whatever that show I'm ripping that off of. Uh, Detailing Law UK is saying, great show. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in again. Uh, you'll see that some of these people, I have like little things that I do because they've been watching like every single one. So I'm, I, a shout out to you guys. Thank you for doing that. Um, I'm not going to go there. Not going to go I think, there. I think the statistics that you looked up were the most watched live show since COVID. That's when all this stuff started. Yeah, I mean, yeah. From, from what I have saw in all of our videos, I, I don't think anyone's came close to us. Uh, we have one that's like almost 200 and some odd thousand views already. So, uh, Sarah Riles, I hope I'm saying your name right. You're on here all the time. Is it bad to use a foam cannon? Sorry, off subject. No. It no, it's not no. bad at all. You want to you want to briefly tell them like how you could use a foam gun with a mitt while washing at the same time? Oh yeah, you just uh, pull the trigger and force feed the the mitt foam as you're moving it over the panel. It's probably one of the mm. most safest way to wash a car, yeah. but it is tedious and time consuming. So I, I don't do that. For a maintenance wash, I like the multiple towels. And I always, if you look at it, I always have this because again, if you don't have this, you're always doing this. You're bending over mm -hmm. and with this these things cost 165 bucks you know uh, give yourself a present buy yourself one you keep all your tools on it you don't got to bend over okay all right all right a couple more then we'll wrap it for the day yeah we got to get ready for the class yeah tomorrow. i got to break all this down and you got to i got to go put my donut order in <laughs> there you go <laughs> donut bagels and coffee okay my, I, I will say this, out of all the classes that I know of, I probably have the worst food. I'll, I'll take that hit. <laughs> right. I don't really care to, if I feed people. I don't really care. I, <laughs> I just want to teach cars. you. I want to teach you. You're going to work, work on cars. All right, we have Thomas Kirby. Thanks for today's brain dump. You're very welcome. <laughs> I'm trying to get it all out of his head. Uh, uh, Before Sarah, I'm gone. Sarah's saying she's taking your wet sanding and glass polishing up at SDC. Yes. Uh, Core says I... Uh, I sealer put on prior to wax and after clay. If it I, works for you, it works for me. I don't get that. But. How's that for an answer, Yancy? Sure. Um, blah, 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 blah. Oh, hey, yeah, Scott came on. Yancy, it only snowed twice last week, once for three days and once for seven days. I mean, for four <laughs> days. See? Hey, I lived in Wyoming, so I know what you're going through. It's like Mother Nature has a spit. It's like one day you're like, hey, look, it's 60, 70 degrees. The next day it's like negative 20 degrees. And when we close out, I'm going to have Jim stand in front of the 1951 Fugly and let everybody hear the car horn. No, we're yes. not. No, we're not doing that. You guys no, want to hear the car horn? No, you don't want to hear the car horn. On the 1951 no. Fugly? No. It's oh, worth man. it. It's oh. worth it. <laughs> All right. Okay, last... I hope, no, Robert Brown, no, no, no mops. Anything that's meant for floor is not meant for your car. <laughs> How about soaping with a string mop instead of a wash mitt? No, 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 no. No. No, 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 no. 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 I could, I'd like to see a video of that, though. We, we could do one. Take the mop and we, 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 we could do it. Oh, and we have C. Dave C. H. Nice truck. Wait until you hear it. I'll let Mike do the horn. You just got to give me a second to get all set up for Okay. It. Um, Benji Davis will be the last one for the day. I have a hard time wrapping my mind around primer polishes. Can you help explain how one polishes and it leaves a sealant or primer on there that actually lasts? Yeah, what we have is a nano gel. And the nano gel is a mechanically bond. So when you polish, we have uh, spheres that, that cut the paint. The short story is we have nanotechnology that's left behind. 
and, and it mechanically bonds to the paint surface. And, and you can ask the same question about anybody's cleaner wax or AIO. How does it remove oxidation, swirls, and scratches mm. and leave wax behind? It's and, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's magic in the voodoo juice. It's uh, magic in the voodoo juice, but they work. <laughs> I use them all the time. Okay, so not only does this 1951 Fugly look good, you've got to hear the horn. You want to stand up there, that way your microphone will pick it up. Oh, oh, you pick oh. I'm sorry, people. Mike has been showing everybody this horn. If you're familiar when you're a kid, J.C. Whitney, right? That's where that horn comes from? Okay. I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> Thank you all for tuning in one last time this day. And it makes oh. like 12 animal noises. <laughs> oh, and I forgot um, the 100,000. Uh, 100, uh, I am like tired already. 10K for 100K. You can see it on your screen right now. It has all the information. You can also look in the comments uh, section below and it has all the information on the contest. You can win $10,000 worth of uh, goodies. Let me clean your brain. And let's go back. Let's go back to here. All right. So with that being said, thank you. 46 is over. We have no idea what we're doing next week. So but thank you, Jim, for being here. Oh, and thank yeah, you. Thank you, That's Jim. fun. Well, we try. You know, and he literally walked in. I'm like, so. You want to put a mic on? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not me. Don't put me on it. All right. Uh, other than that, stay tuned. We'll definitely have some pictures and stuff going out across our social media of the class that he's doing this weekend. If you haven't seen what he does in his class, definitely look at it. And if you want to, all the information will be posted so that way you can look into the September class because that one still has some available spaces, correct? Yes. Yeah, so all right. So with that being said, I'm done here. Mike, what are you going to do now? I got to move cars around. We all right, start at 7.30, sharp, all always. Right. I take a picture of my watch and we go. All right, how about Jim? You and I will go over with Mike over there and we'll have margaritas while he's moving cars around. Sound good? Sounds great. Yep, there we go. Good. Mike, start the blender. <laughs>